All right, so Jim, what what uh, other factors besides El Nino made the season so slow this year? Well, the uh, the main reason it wasn't the El Nino that caused the slowness is uh, is a main factor because it creates a lot of unfavorable, uh, not just the wind shear over the over the tops of the storms. You get you get the dry air and the little subsidence, which is the descending air, and when you get all that rising air in the Pacific. Is downstream from it, you get the low, uh, the descending air, which you know, over the Indian Ocean and over the Atlantic Basin, uh, when it's real warm in the Pacific. And then, uh, any, any tropical system that comes along will have a hard time from both fronts because of, uh, the, they'll get that subsidence will, and the drier air will wrap into these systems that are trying to develop. And then, then as they move along, they get an increasing shear. Because uh, the most of the shear is around the uh, western Atlantic, over the Caribbean and Gulf, that area. Right. Uh, you know, it was fighting uh, more than one problem. But once the El Nino ends, that that type of uh, that substance will should be less. Right. And uh, the sea surface temperatures were uh, its lowest since 1994. And why is that reason? Well, there was probably, during the early part of the year, the uh, sea surface anomalies over the Atlantic Basin, you know, or mainly over the eastern Atlantic, were lower than normal. But they did warm up. They did turn around toward mid-season. And what they, what they cool, the reason they cool off quite a bit is when you get a lot of strong trade winds across the, the, that region. You get real strong winds and it causes upwelling and cr- brings the cold, cool water to the top. But that that, that did uh, slack off during the summer and uh, fall months, and we had actually uh, normal or above over the the critical area, which was the eastern Atlantic, eastern tropical Atlantic, because the, that water over there is usually just barely adequate for uh, formation of hurricanes, because it's only around uh, in the very upper 70s and low 80s, as you know, at as warmest point. And that's usually on uh, late August, September. That's why one reason the storms do don't pro- really form out there until then. Right. But if it's a little below normal in the fall, then that'll you know, been a real problem getting anything going out there. And most of the storm we had this year, we're we're in the eastern Atlantic, which you would like take, take for instance Fred and uh, Bill. And Fred, be, it was uh, I think the third hurricane in the last hundred years that formed east. East of uh, latitude, uh, longitude 35 west, which is highly unusual because you know to get a storm to reach major hurricane intensity, you need at least uh, 82 degree water temperature, and it must have been you know must have been warm enough to uh, to allow that to happen. But the, the shear didn't allow them to move over to the western parts of the of the basin at all. Right. Yeah, I'm looking at a. Um Global analysis sea surface temperature anomaly degrees Celsius, and and during the um, uh, first you know during the during the uh, last year in March on the 12th the the uh, eastern Pacific it was cool it was blue and it looked like a, a La Nina was starting to form out there. Yeah, the, the, and this was uh, early in uh, 2009. You mean, or was that 2008? Oh, uh, this is March 12th, 2009. Oh, okay, yeah. It was, it was, uh, it turned around toward, as the year went on, Neil. It started warming and more and more of it. As the, uh, we got into the main part of the season, uh, the water over there was much warmer. Plus, the, you know, the upper level the winds were, uh, much stronger. And the low level winds over there were more out of the west, which it creates more storms over the, in the Pacific basin. And then, in, but in turn, that, that type of, uh, Pressure anomaly and everything else causes uh, less storms over in the Atlantic side. Right, and uh, the, now I'm looking at uh, July 17th of 2009, and it shows the water starting to warm over off the east coast of the South America now, and I can see El Nino starting to form there. Yeah, yeah, that's off the west coast there, and uh, yeah, and, you know, the, it was getting really warm. It, it it was kind of stalling around for a while. It looked like we might get by with a, a very uh, we El Nino through the season, but then it suddenly revved up in August, and that was the the most unlikely time to have uh, you know any kind of storm development when when you get that uh, El Nino revving up, you know, right at the peak of the season. Right. And you know, very unusual to have a storm storm such as Hurricane Bill 
during an El Nino because it was a very big classic hurricane. It was way out in the Atlantic. It formed and went across the central Atlantic. It looked like for a while it was going to come to the eastern U.S., but uh, soon uh, uh, recur. Uh, you know, I think it went west of Bermuda and uh, you know, off the east coast and uh, barely, th- uh, and I think it kind of threatened uh, the Canadian maritime areas. Yeah, it did. But that was about it. And it that gave was the highlight of the year. It, Bill, Claudette, and uh, Danny, I think, were the highlights of the year. And plus Ida that we had that moved into the Gulf Coast, but uh, yeah. basically just a weak tropical storm. Yeah, it, it formed right over the key. You know, the, the, no, the thing that formed Claudette was actually went right over the keys. I saw it go by here. You could see our wind shift around and uh, real heavy rain for about a day, but then it moved off the west coast of uh, Florida, then it went up to the Gulf Coast and developed in a, a weak tropical storm uh, around Panama City. Right, and the wind shear was uh, really high this year. That was another factor of El Nino, right? Yeah, you always uh, associate with the El Nino pattern. You, it, it, it gets the upper low, uh, you know, the 200 millibar lows intensify more and more of them in the mid-Atlantic trough, which is a semi-permanent feature. In, in years that there's a lot of storms, you get the, the sem- uh, that trough there, but it's very weak and very few lows in it. But uh, during El Nino years, you get the uh, trough is larger and it has bigger lows, and they tend to stay in the, stay in place. And then they rip off the top of any kind of tropical system that comes along. Right. Yeah, we got about uh, three minutes here. So um, a lot of you no, know, a lot of the storms that we had this year turned out to sea. And why was that as well? Was it trough trough kicking off the United States? Is that what caused yeah. it? Yeah, we had a uh, pretty much uh, permanent drop off the east coast or in the U- of the U.S. at mid-level steering levels, and that was uh, that started to show up during the spring months. It stayed there all summer long, and it was associated with a much much deeper than usual, even for east coast troughs. And we had a fairly cool summer over the U.S. because of that. And, uh, and you know, so in uh, the, the thunderstorms over Florida were pretty good over the you know, over the mainland because of that. Uh, constant dropping you know, in that area. Right. And um, high levels of uh, dry air were also a factor this year as well. Yeah, we had a lot of dry air. I think uh, because of the El Nino and the su- uh, and the substance, it made the Sahara, the, the air, air over the Sahara move out over the Atlantic. There was much more of it than usual because I heard even they had a drought in Iraq, which is, you know, the and not too far from the Sahara, that's over, the, you know, east of Africa there. But all that air mass moves east to west during the summer months, and that, that dry air just getting trained into these tropical systems that were moving across. Right. And the MJO this year, was it It wasn't uh, too high as you expected it to be, or is this levels that it goes from? Or Well, the MJO is very unpredictable. You know, they, these, they have some models that do predict, but it is it's never exactly what they say it is it, it comes and goes and sometimes it doesn't make it over here at all sometimes it doesn't uh really develop when it's supposed to it's 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 very irregular but it's average is 45 days it'll uh, go on eat, you know, that side of the globe but uh like i say it's very unpredictable where it's going to be it might be over here 45 days it might be not be it just uh, it's a it, it's a crapshoot with that thing all together, but that that does help the uh, the, the, the Atlantic tropics. You'll see the you'll see the it starts out the Pacific and it gradually works its way over the uh, Eastern Atlantic, uh, Eastern Pacific, then the uh, then the Atlantic. But it it will it'll flare up the monsoons more than anything, and then uh, and in turn it'll be a little more favorable for hurricanes because it's upward motion of the air mass. Right. You know, because then after it moves by, then we get the downward motion. That's why you see a lot of times you see two or three storms flare up all you know within a couple of days of one another during the mid season. It's not. It's just it's it's kind of. Uh, I remember when I was younger, I was always wondering why are we having hurricanes that will pop up out of nowhere, and on the other side of the basement, and you'll see a, uh, another storm pop up. But that that explains it is what you know when it comes around. Because right. you, you you can see it when you look at the full disc picture, uh, you'll see you kind of see where it's at. Uh, oh, yeah. 